Daybreak and we are now just about five months away from what scientists are calling a once in a lifetime experience for Western New Yorkers, the total solar eclipse. Yeah, and what makes it so special for us is we are in what's known as the path of totality. It makes our region a huge draw for enthusiasts and it also reminds us of the last time this happened here 99 years ago. And as we find in this week's unknown story, the buildup was met with disappointment. Terry Farrell and Tim Collins co-host The Seventh Magnitude. It's a podcast dedicated to all things space. And as you can imagine, that discussion is focused mainly on April 8th. We're going to be anticipating up to a million visitors in Buffalo. A mass invasion known as ambush tourism. Ambush tourism is just a way of saying that uh, you're going to get uh, a whole horde of people descending on you all at once. So what's causing the ambush? The celestial spectacle of the solar eclipse. And when you're in an eclipse, things change a little bit. You're, you're, you become awestruck during an eclipse. And that's what people are chasing. They're chasing that feeling of, of wonder and awe all around the world when they can get it. The event for people in Western New York is going to be a once in a lifetime experience. That's because Buffalo and Niagara Falls are the only cities in the country that will be in the path of totality. It's a big deal because it won't happen again until the year 2144. To catch a glimpse of what we might expect, we have to look back nearly a century to January 24, 1925, when the morning skies darkened in the shadow of the moon. They had a lot of scientists coming into town. There were several experiments going on. WGR had just come on the air um, the year before, so they were part of some of those radio experiments that were going on. The newspaper headlines tell the story of anticipation. Scientists gather here, predict fair sky for eclipse. There were people on the rooftops of the buildings. That's where they were. Um, every building downtown here that was here had people on it, just waiting for the expectation. Just like today, us building up to 2024 and you know anticipating this huge influx of people, that's what they were doing in the last one, 1925, as well. Tony Greco of the Buffalo History Museum points out that at the time, Buffalo was a major city and this was a major attraction. Papers for weeks in advance were publishing articles about uh, what to expect, the science behind the eclipse, um, how to watch it safely with your smoked glasses, how to make your own you know, eclipse glasses. William Hangerer's department store delayed its opening for the day. All eyes were on the skies. And before that, they were on the forecast. They were actually predicting partly cloudy skies that day, but weather forecasting wasn't as good as it is now. But that morning, Mother Nature got the best of the forecasters and rained on the parade of millions as the clouds rolled in and eclipsed the eclipse. Because they didn't have Patrick Hammer back then. No. So, you know. <laughs> yeah, now the last one hit maximum coverage at 9.04 in the morning. This time, it'll be about 3.18 in the afternoon. So we'll see about a total of 3 minutes, 45 seconds. Mm -hmm. But the last one hit on a Saturday morning. This one's going to be a Monday afternoon. So there's going to be a lot more people trying to get around in their daily routine. Yeah. And then things will go dark. How soon can we start watching the forecast? <laughs> well, Patrick will have his 95-day uh, outlook <laughs> coming up after the break, right? All right. All right, 646.